This is a totally fair question. Do all these itty bitty math tricks that only apply under certain circumstances actually impede student understanding? This is part of a larger debate, at least among math teachers, about whether we should teach for understanding or whether we should teach for reproducible algorithms. Unsurprisingly, I say, Is it too much to ask for both? And here's why. Take something like yesterday's trick, 34 times 36, an example of two numbers whose tens digits are the same and whose ones digits add up to 10. We have our nifty little trick that says, take those ones digits, multiply them together. That will be the final two digits of your product. And then take those tens digits, increasing one of them by one, multiply that together, and you get the first two digits of your product. This is obviously much easier to do than something like the standard algorithm, which is why we use it as a mental math trick. But it's also less applicable than the standard algorithm. This won't work on something like, say, 36 times 37. For that, you would either use a different math Math trick or you would just use the standard algorithm or let's be honest you would just use a calculator now what I would encourage my students to consider next is why does this trick work under this particular circumstance and one way we might start to analyze that is using an area model for multiplication we're going to represent these numbers 36 and 34 split into their tens digit portion that would be 30 in both cases and then the ones digit portions that's the six and the four when we multiply it out this way of course 30 times 30 is 900 and of course four times six is 24 and in fact that 24 we can already see in our final product but the 900 clearly isn't a 12 or 1200 just yet we have to keep multiplying 30 times 6 fills in this other cell with 180 and then 30 times 4 fills in this bottom right cell with 120 and it's at this point that we can see oh that's interesting 120 and 180 together just happen to make another 300. So when we add all of these boxes together, the 900 and the 300 don't have anything in their ones or tens places, which is why this 24 gets carried through to the final product. Not only that, but the 12 that we can see coming now from a 9 plus a 3 happens to be the same thing as the 3 times 4 that we talked about earlier from the tens digit when we were performing our trick. To push this even further, let's try to write this even more generally. Not 30 plus 6 or 30 plus 4, but instead some generic tens digit, which I'll represent as 10 times k, and then some generic set of ones digits, a and b, where again we know for sure that a plus b is 10. A and B, the ones digits, add up to 10. As we multiply this through using our area model, we get 100K squared and plus AB, the same place before that we got 924. And then we also happen to get 10KA and 10KB in these other two cells. As we write this out, we get 100K squared plus 10KA plus 10KB plus that AB which again, we're expecting to somehow end up as the final two digits of our product. At this point, we can now illustrate another useful tool, factoring. And we can say, well, this 10KA plus 10KB is actually the same thing as 10K times the sum A plus B. And we happen to know what that sum is. A plus B has to equal 10. So we can replace this A plus B with 10, and then one more time rewrite this 100K squared plus 100K, that's 10 times 10 times K, plus AB. Meaning if we factor one more time, we can see a common 100K between those first two terms. We can see where that idea of three times four was coming from. Whatever our tens digit is times the next number up. We can also see why it didn't interact with this plus AB product at all, because this 100 in front of the K times K plus 1 is telling us essentially move two place value spaces to the left. Are we going to use this trick every time we need to multiply two numbers? No, of course not. Again, that's why we have a standard algorithm that works in all cases, and of course it's also why we have calculators. But once we start to understand how this math trick works from the inside out, we can actually use this information to, for example, build our own algorithm. Consider reversing this trick around. Let's say we actually wanted to figure out, is there anything special about numbers of the form, say, 36 times 76? That is numbers in which the ones digits happen to be the same and the tens digits add up to 10. We could represent that once again using the area model where K is that common ones digit and then 10A and 10B are the tens digits where A plus B adds up to 10 itself. In this case, of course, 
3 plus 7 makes 10. I leave it as an exercise to the viewer to figure out what would the trick be. Write it down in the comments below. How would you describe the trick for multiplying two numbers where the tens digits add up to 10 and the ones digits are the same? Like this video, subscribe to the channel, share this with your friends. I will see y'all next time.